Hi everyone. Welcome to a short presentation on the topic of gentrification. Gentrification is a big idea in geography. There's been a lot of books written about it, a lot of case studies done about it, a lot of research papers written about gentrification. That having been said, it's a complex idea that not everyone agrees about a definition of, and not everybody even agrees whether gentrification is a bad thing or a neutral thing. Uh, not a lot of people argue that gentrification is entirely a good thing, but not everyone agrees that it has to be a bad thing. So keep that in mind. If you find that the idea is very complex, maybe a little confusing, that's okay. That's true for a lot of people that hear about this idea of gentrification. A really brief summary of gentrification. And again, not everyone agrees on an exact definition. Some people have different definitions of what gentrification is or how it is defined or what it means for different people. So with that in mind, here's my definition of gentrification. Gentrification is a process of neighborhood change wherein a neighborhood becomes wealthier and it also becomes whiter. It's possible for a neighborhood to do something that looks like gentrification, but I'm using this definition because the places where gentrification becomes an issue, where it becomes a topic of debate or subject to a lot of discussion or the coverage in the news, the focus of conversations, is when there is a neighborhood that's not just becoming wealthier, but also becoming whiter. Pause for a minute and consider with me what becoming whiter means, because that's at the heart of gentrification. And I'm willing to think about the idea of gentrification without it being about race necess necessarily. But becoming whiter means replacement or displacement. There are people coming into the neighborhood that are different than the people that were there. And so the people that were there must be going out of the neighborhood. That part right there where there's people moving in, but there's also people moving out is why gentr gentrification is oftentimes a controversial topic or a seen as a bad thing. Let's talk really quick about fault lines. Now, don't worry, this is not a physical geography class. But in geography, we talk about fault lines in physical geography where the Earth has a split, either within a plate or even at two continental plate boundaries, where the Earth is moving in different directions. And of course, as we know from our really basic science classes, where these fault lines move, we have the ground moving, but also we have disruption, we have landslides, we have earthquakes, we have tsunamis, we have all kinds of problems associated with these fault lines where things are moving in different directions. We use the word fault lines in human geography in a metaphorical sense. So we don't mean that the land is actually moving, but we talk about cultural phenomenon as though there is a shift as there is a fault line that's causing friction and resistance and maybe even earthquakes or natural disasters. Here are a few fault lines that we observe with gentrification. To review, the definition I'm using in, of gentrification in the United States is when a neighborhood is becoming wealthier and whiter, which implies a displacement of the minority people who were there as more people move in from outside of that region. Again, it's worth considering in the context of your own country whether we might see a displacement happening where people of the same race move in but are of a different social status and are replacing the people who were there. As a matter of fact, I know that happens in a lot of developing country contexts where there's maybe poor people living in a really uh, extremely poor area and then it's just cleared out, it's leveled by a bulldozer, and rich people then move into that land. 
but that's a little bit different context than what we're talking about here in the American city. One fault line I'd like to bring to your attention is the difference of class, higher class and lower class people. So high class people obviously are moving in, lower class people are living there, and that is at the part of a neighborhood becoming wealthier. Richer people are moving into the neighborhood. The wealthier status, the increase in wealth of the neighborhood is caused by those wealthier people moving into the neighborhood. And by the way, this is where the term gentrification comes from because the term gentry is a British term. The gentry were a class of British people that is the, the people who are one rank below the nobility. They owned land. They weren't nobles, but they were very high status citizens of the country, of the British, of the British uh, hierarchy. So the gentry then were people who were considered to have uh, high social status. And that's what we're referring to here is the people moving into this neighborhood are bringing money with them and investing in the neighborhood. Now, if you, like me, hear that and think, well, investing in a neighborhood is good. That's, they're spending money and they're making the neighborhood nicer. And what could be wrong with that? And I'm sympathetic because that's my perspective as well. So the new residents move in and they increase the value of the neighborhood. And that's one of the phenomena we just discussed in our definition of gentrification. The neighborhood becomes wealthier because these higher class people move in. Now, from the perspective of the lower class people, that might not be as desirable as we think it is because it's bringing change to the neighborhood. This then is our other fault line, which is the old residents versus the new residents. The older residents, because the neighborhood is increasing in value, sometimes dramatically, there's a lot of pressure on older residents, people who may, maybe someone owned a house for 50 years in the neighborhood. They're a grandma and a grandpa. They've been there for forever. They, they feel like they, they belong there. But now they learn that they can sell their house that was once worth two hundred dollars or $300,000, and now it's worth a million dollars. So they have a pressure to sell their house. But also, maybe their neighbors are people of a minority community who are renting from a landlord. Now the landlord also has an incentive either to increase rent or even to sell the property to more of these gentrifiers that are moving in. So there's a pressure to change the neighborhood, not just somebody moving into a house, but across the neighborhood, there's a pressure through these increasing values to sell your house or turn from a rental into a sale. That then changes the, the sense of belonging to the neighborhood as people who have been there for a long time choose to move out or if their rent goes up too high or their rental turns into a for sale property as they're pushed out, they're displaced by not being able to rent anymore. So that's a sense of, that's a, that's a source of conflict. That's a fault line between old residents and new residents in these kind of communities. And the last part that I want to emphasize that's an element of this fault line, this, this friction between uh, people in a gentrifying neighborhood is that of race, which is, again, in the American context, the, the most controversial cases of gentrification are when it's white people, richer, white, whiter, more upper class people moving into a minority neighborhood. I just said that first part, I didn't even need to look at the screen. Uh, the reason this issue is highly contentious in America is because America has a long history of racial strife. And even after the Civil War, after the, the struggle for civil rights, uh, after a long history of trying to right racial, racial injustices. In America, we saw 
we've seen a history of highly segregated neighborhoods. There were neighborhoods that were predominantly black neighborhoods, were predominantly Hispanic neighborhoods, or predominantly Asian neighborhoods. And then there were neighborhoods, mostly suburbs, that were largely white neighborhoods. So then these neighborhoods where people feel like they have a sense of place, and I didn't bring that up, that's on my previous slide, let me underline that here, right? Uh, if you're from a place, you develop what we call a sense of place, a feeling of it being your home. I'm sure many of you, if you're in the United States, have that feeling where you feel homesick, you really want to be at home. And even though you know that home is just, for a lot of us, just a very ordinary place, there's also nothing like it. And that is that sense of place, that idea that that this place that I live is where I belong, it's where I've been a long time, it is familiar, it is comfortable. Even the parts that other people might think are dirty or scary or weird, I, I like them because they're part of what makes this place what it is. I just knocked something over, excuse me. So that sense of place then gets changed when we see gentrification happening. And that too happens when we see a place that was a community of a minority group. So an Asian group, a Hispanic group, a black group had their own sense of place in this neighborhood. And suddenly wealthier, whiter people start moving in and renovating houses, changing the property values, crushing old houses, building new ones. These changes are very often seen as not just changing the house, but threatening that feeling, the cultural landscape of the community. I hope that makes sense to you, these different fault lines, these different sources of conflict that we can use to examine the idea of gentrification and why it might be controversial or why it's seen as unpopular or bad by a lot of people in the communities where it's happening. That's all I have for this topic for now. I'm happy to take your questions and I hope it helped you understand the idea a little bit more thoroughly. Thanks so much.